And welcome to Words to My Face. On tonight's show, we are talking about how Clash of Clans almost ruined Kansas City's Royals Cinderella season. We're talking about how Kevin Durant has said that his injury might be a win-win. I mean, if it's coming from Kevin Durant, it's gold. That's all I got to say. We're also talking about how London wants their own NFL team. Stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cup, Global Cup crossover needs to happen. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Words from My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yes, we are. So I really have no follow-up to that one right now, so uh, we're just going to say, hey, it's our sports show. (laughs) It is. That's what we're doing tonight. Thursday night, we're doing sports. Just a quick heads up, a programming alert. Um, We are moving our Monday show to Sunday, so if you watch us uh, live, then uh, it's a day early. Yeah, the entertainment show is going to be a day early. Or... It's going to be right on time, because I know a lot of you just like to watch it on YouTube the day after anyway. So there you go. You're going to get it a day early. Ha ha. Either way. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. But yeah, okay. So um, let's just jump right into it, and let's start it off this, this week the same way we started off every week, and that is with our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. <laughs> And this week's award goes to Mr. Peyton Manning. Now, he has been the recipient of multiple ones of these awards, but this week he gets it for surpassing Brett Favre for the touchdown record. I believe he now has 510, and that is before tonight's game, which I think he now has 512. Um, and he is Already? 38 years old, and yeah, he's just a, he's amazing. And I just want to put it in perspective his career. Uh, now, a lot of people hate on him for not winning enough Super Bowls, but I really don't think you can because if you think about it, who are two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time? Let's just say Joe Montana and Steve Young. Okay, yes, I had those specifically picked out before this, but he has thrown more touchdowns than both of those guys put together. Yeah, two Hall of Famers. But with about five know, does Super he Bowl cost too much? Mm, so they have to he... sacrifice on their defense? Uh, no, no, because they're they're doing fine this year. I mean, and, I mean, just in general, like, did he cost too much for Indianapolis so they couldn't uh, boost up their defense or something like that? No, no, they were just foolish on defense. Okay, that's that's all I gotta say. He's he's just an amazing player, and he deserves our two bucket chainsaw of the week award. So go ahead and give it to him. All right. <laughs> and he's been pretty. Obviously, this shows that he's been very consistently Chewbacca chainsaw worthy. Um, I mean, last year, what, he was setting touchdown records per game and things he like that. The t- he set the touchdown record per yeah. game. He set the, the passing yards for – well, he set he set the touchdown record for a whole season, passing touchdowns for a season. He set the passing record for a season. Um, the offense set the record for most points ever scored by an offense. I mean, he just – he was on fire. So, yeah, he's he's a beast. But let's roll it over and start talking about some baseball. And we are in the World Series right now. You have the San Francisco Giants and the Kansas City Royals Buttonheads. You do have a 1-1 tie, which the first two games have been kind of weird because if you looked at Kansas City's games, they were all like one-run games that they won, like all of them. And now there's like these 7-1, to 7-2 to games. So kind of interesting there. But we're not really going to talk about the series as much as we're going to talk about stories just surrounding the series. And now this is an interesting report. I got this off of IGN, and... Normally, if I say I got something off of IGN, you'd think, hey, it's Monday, we're doing the entertainment show. No, this actually is a sports story. So apparently, uh, Jared Dyson of the Kansas City Royals, he is a backup player, uh, he started playing it around mid-season, you know, June, July. Got really into Clash of Clans. He's like, hey, this is an awesome game. Hey, I really like it. So he roped in Kane, Valencia, and Hovsmer, three very, very uh, important players on that roster, and he got them to start playing it with them. So they started to become almost addicted. Uh, they played so much that one of the coaches mentioned to these guys, hey, guys, 
we just lost the game. We're on a downward spiral in our season. And after these losses, all I see you guys is playing is Clash of Clans for like three hours. What's what's going on here? And so this uh, brought to the players' attention. They kind of had a meeting. They said, all right, guys, what's more important? Clash of Clans or baseball? That pays us millions of dollars. So they decided, ah, I guess baseball is more important. And, um, yeah, so they stopped playing. And instead of dedicating the, the time they would have to Clash of Clans, you know, they did silly little things like watched pitchers pitch, you know, for their opponents so they could see what was coming. And after they stopped playing Clash of Clans, they went on to win 16 of their next 19 games. Wow. Which really put them back in position to make the playoffs and get where they are right now. So... Yeah, I just thought that was pretty interesting because I play Clash of Clans too. I don't know how you could just de- devote three hours into that. It I just haven't. doesn't. I've been seeing advertisements for it like all over the place, and I was like, okay, what's, what's it's that fun game? game? It is a fun game, but I don't understand how you could put that much time into it. It's not is it like a free to play game? Yeah, it's a free to play game. Of course, you have to pay if you want to get stuff moving faster, but yeah. it's not even that bad. I mean, I've played some of those games where like, if you don't pay money, you can't do anything. This one is not that bad. It's really not. Mm. So, I don't quite understand, though, how it took that much time out of their daily lives. So, Maybe I, it I takes really more don't. time out of your daily lives if you're able to pay more money to pay for everything. Then... And they probably did, because um, mm. they are millionaires, so <laughs> I would guess. Uh, I guess they're the credit card warriors in the Clash of Clans. I, I, don't, mm. I don't know, but I, I just thought that was pretty interesting, because, yeah, 16 of 19 games after you stop playing Clash of Clans. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I've heard of teams banning Twitter, but maybe teams should ban Clash of Clans. Or just getting obsessed with any other game. I don't know. This is any this is kind of like the classic uh, thing we talk uh, people sometimes talk about with, with work. Like, some of these games, particularly MMOs and some other games, getting in the way of uh, productivity, you know? And that's exactly what's happening here, but now with athletes. So, which is unusual. Yeah. We don't but, usually associate athletes with yeah. as being big, uh, like just such avid, addicted video game players. Now, I but, do remember hearing hey. a couple of years ago, um, maybe about eight years ago, actually, there was a Detroit Tigers pitcher who had, uh, during the playoffs, he was a reliever for them. He had a mysterious arm injury, and it was apparently due to playing too much Guitar Hero. So that's, <laughs> that's the only other time I've heard of it. So that was interesting. Yeah, so that was our Kansas City Royals story. Now we're going to give you a San Francisco Giants story. Now, it's not quite a Giants story as much as as much as much it is a San Francisco area story. Um, now, two radio stations in San Francisco, KFOG and KOIT, have banned the playing of the Lord's song, Royals, um, during the playoffs. And we all know that song. I'm not even going to hum it to you because you know what it is. And they say that because they don't want to support the Royals in any way, they want to support the Giants. And yes. I say, I don't think it's going to help. You know and what I think it is? I think it's a publicity stunt to get that song more attention. But by banning? Oh, I guess that, that yeah. is true. Yeah, when you ban and stuff, people are like, hey, let's go just listen to the ban thing. Because they it, now, that's it. if that song could get any more attention because when it first came out, it was everywhere yeah. all the time. I, at, Did at you hear that, uh, that 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 um, she actually tried to get it banned from the radio waves? She got she tried to get it banned herself. Well, because it's like it's like a song about not being like so pretentious and like crazy. I guess. Well, what her reason really... was her reason was a little bit weirder. It was. Because she had another song coming out in a couple months, and she was like, I like to give people a break so that when I come back, it's all fresh, or something like that. Well, I was like, and we're, we're like, sick of that song right. anyway, because um, it's, it's not my t- cup of tea. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. It's it's not really my type of song. So, yeah, I just, I just thought it's that was It's your favorite song, right, isn't it? It is. You're playing it right now in your head. In my headphones. You just can't hear it. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, so that's uh, yeah, that was just two interesting stories I just wanted to kind of mention. Uh, neither one of them all that sports related, but it has to do something with sports. So there you go. I'm not going to talk about how um, the games went because by the time we you watch it, it'll be like after the games are done. So no point. So 
let's all just talk about how the Royals won. No, the Royals aren't going to win. I have a feeling the Giants are going to win this one because the Giants took one in Kansas City, and now they have two more back in San Francisco. I think they're going to win win the whole series. That's my prediction. At least they've also won two of the last past two of the. They won in 2010 and 2012, and now we're in 2014. So, but the Royals have that drive. That drive from people that haven't seen the playoffs in 29 and years. And if they had not beat the and Orioles to make it to the World Series, maybe I could root for them. But no, I cannot root for them. And you might say, well, hey, you're yeah, also a Nationals fan. And they beat the Giants beat the Nationals. I don't care. Royals beat my Orioles, and I don't appreciate it. Don't appreciate it one bit. I don't either. And I'm wearing Royals blue right now. So I'm very contradictory. I know I am, but it's it happens. What can I say? Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's take that. Well, let us know what you guys think about either of these stories. Um, is Clash of Clans that good? Do you love it that much? And is banning the song from a radio station going to help a baseball team? I don't know. Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter. Where's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And let's move it on to some NBA. What? More directly, let's talk about Kevin Durant. Oh, my thunder. Where's my thunder? I want my thunder. So, Kevin Durant, yes, he had surgery on his leg. And he's going to be out probably in the next six to eight weeks. And he, he was talking to reporters recently and, and saying, hey, what do you think about this situation? He kind of was like, hey, you know, I kind of find this a win-win. There's, there's no way we could possibly lose on this situation. Number one, <laughs> yeah, his direct quote is, it is a win-win, basically because I'm learning a lot about the game and my teammates are getting a lot of opportunities because there are a lot of minutes out there. So pretty much what he say was saying, he's like, hey, yeah, I'm learning a lot more about how everybody's supposed to work. I'm just kind of wheelchairing myself from place to place and showing, learning how to be a leader on and off the court, more specifically off the court. And some of the younger guys and one of the other stars of the team, Russell Westbrook, is getting an opportunity to shine a little bit more. So he's kind of like, yeah, you know. And all I got to say about this is this just shows that Kevin Durant is the best player in the NBA has ever seen in the history of NBA because he's not only super unselfish, he wants his teammates to do well, but he's also resting himself more for the Wizards who he's going to come back to. And I know you might say, well, how does that make him the best player? It just does. All right? All right? Because the Wizards always get the best players eventually. (laughs) <laughs> Sometimes past their prime. <laughs> yeah, I guess eventually, we did get Jordan. Jordan. Um, but yeah, and Jordan was actually still pretty good when he came to us. It's just it was just Jordan, and he wasn't the same Jordan. So well, he was the forty-year-old version of Jordan. So yeah. that was he was still really good. He was yeah. still like you know better than most other players, but he wasn't good enough that he could carry the team yeah. to a chance to the playoffs. He could. No, he couldn't do that. He couldn't even take it to the playoffs. So that was interesting. But Kevin Durant just just continues to surprise me more and more and more. And I don't know how he could do that because I've already, you know, like, I, I can't like the guy anymore. Uh, and I can't talk any better about him. But he seems to keep finding ways because, I mean, most players, when they're out injured like this, they say, oh, I can't wait to get back out there. My team needs me. My team needs me. This guy's like, hey, I want to be there for the team any way, shape, or form. If I'm hurt on the Sidelines, I'm still going to be their best cheerleader slash I'm going to help coach them, you know. And you know what? This gives other people time to develop, time to, you know, become better, bigger stars. It's just the most unselfish guy in the NBA. And, uh, yeah, when he becomes a Washington Wizard in 2016, it's going to be amazing. Okay, that was weird. I'll never look like that again at the camp, I promise. Yep, and that's Kevin Durant. So let us know what you think about Kevin Durant. Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, What's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. Um, and then let's talk about Paul George. Uh, now, this was the Indiana Pacers star who, over the summer, playing for the Team USA, had one of the most horrific basketball injuries ever. I mean, we talked about it on the show. Pretty much his leg snapped in half. I mean, literally. In half. It, it, was did it, severed? it wasn't decap. It wasn't like it wasn't awesome. severed, but it, it snapped in half, mm. uh, pretty much. You know, it was it was really really bad. And after an injury like that, they were saying he's going to be out for the whole year, which he still will. Uh, what I'm about to say does not change the fact that he's going to be out for the whole year, at least. Yeah. 
Um, but apparently, just three months after this horrific injury, he's already out there shooting jump shots, which is pretty amazing. Now, how much lift he's getting on those jump shots, I don't know. Um, is he, like, limping? More than likely everywhere. But three months after breaking your leg, it probably is set itself, but it hasn't fully healed. So I don't look to him to return to action this year, which, you know, I'm kind of glad for because, you know, it gives the East a little more parity and the Wizards get a better chance. But, uh, yeah, I just think it's remarkable that this guy is already taking jump shots. If it was me and my leg snapped in half like that, I wouldn't, I, I would just wouldn't even want to look at my leg for the next, like, six months because it would just remind me of how horrific of an injury it was. And so, that's why you're not a high-level athletic basketball player. It's not, that's not nice. Because you can't me. take it. I, could, I could, couldn't take it. You can't deal with the injuries. I could deal with them. I just, yeah, that would I'm be honestly bad. surprised that you can't deal with the injuries. You'd think that you'd be, you'd be prepared for this with living with Chewbacca all this time. Yeah, but he I mean, he's got to have snapped your arm a couple times at least. I mean, but he's always nice, and he only dislocates it, and then he puts it right back in. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's not as bad. He, he like, right right yanks back. it out, and he's like, all right, fine, I'll put it right back in. So, I mean, yeah, it hurts, but, you know, it goes away. Yeah, I, just just congrats to you, Paul George. I mean, the fact that you're walking around and still doing stuff, it, it's that's a big sign. So, yeah. And then um, I want to talk about Manny Pacquiao. Now, this isn't really an NBA story, but it is a basketball story. So the PBA, the Filipino Basketball Association. What? Yeah. Um, he actually recently made his debut as a player slash coach for the Kia Sorrentos. Player slash coach? Yeah, he's a player slash coach for the Kia Sorrentos. Now, I don't believe there is a, a city named Kia. Uh, it's really just like a marketing to, you know, thing. So a crappy car sponsors their team. Um, but, yeah, so he made his debut where he played a total of seven minutes and committed two turnovers. And now he's going to take a break from said basketball so he can get ready for his uh, title fight to defend his WBO title in November. What? <laughs> yeah, this guy, he's a congressman in the Philippines. He is now the player slash, head, player slash coach of uh, the basketball team there. And he's about to get into a big prize fight. So... I don't think there's anything this guy can't do. Why didn't he get the Chewbacca chain? Oh, I guess because he lost. I mean, he committed two turnovers in ten minutes. He didn't do very well. His team yeah. won, but he didn't do very well. <laughs> I, I He's just there. Out. He was just there. He was kind of like, hey, I'm that coach. Let me in. Okay, coach, I'll let myself in. Oh, wait, I'm <laughs> sucking. Get out. Okay, I'll Learn the in. fundamentals. <laughs> <laughs> So and and he played one game and he's already taken a step back. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know if he'll return after that, but he's only five foot six. So I can't imagine he has that much of a future in basketball. Yeah. Well, uh, how tall are the other guys in the Philippines? You know what? Good call. If like the tallest player in their on their team is like five foot eight, then maybe he's pretty good size for it. Then that means I should go to the Philippines and play basketball because I'm six foot three and blocking shots. Okay, I probably still would, but. Yeah. Never know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm sure they work on their fundamentals. They know how to make the them free throws and everything else. They know. Okay. I'll just have to agree with you because I've never seen a PBA game. And when I first read PBA, I thought he was going to be a professional bowler. I was like, he's bowling too? What the hell? But no, it's basketball. So that was interesting. So let us know what you guys think about Manny Pacquiao in, in the PBA. I don't know what you guys could possibly tell us about that. I just thought it was a fun story I wanted to talk about. Hit us up. Comments down below. I, I just hope he does better in his fights than he does in uh, in basketball. Well, he's a, he's defending his title, so he's a really good fighter. But he is like 38 years old, too, so he's getting up there. But uh, hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words for My Face on Twitter. Words for My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's go ahead and shift gears and roll it right into some NCAA football. And that is because Georgia has just yesterday um, petitioned the NCAA to reinstate Todd Gurley. Now, Todd Gurley, he might have a tragic name for a football player. I mean, Gurley. I mean, come on, really? Could you think of a worse name for a football player? I can think of a couple, but they're not. Softy uh... McSofterson? I'm not sure we're allowed to say the ones that uh, 
that I could think of. Okay, well then uh, we'll get Brendan's mind out of the gutter. But <laughs> no. and uh, yeah, so they've asked for the NCAA to reinstate him. Uh, now he was suspended indefinitely on October 9th, I believe, um, because of allegations that he was paid to sign autographs for memorabilia. And yes, that is a very similar thing that's happened to James Winston, and Florida mm-hmm. State has done nothing. Um, but Georgia got out ahead of it, and they kind of just said, okay, we're going to indefinitely suspend him until this investigation is done. So now they really, really need him back. I believe they're playing Florida this week. That's a huge rivalry. <laughs> they're there, playing but... Florida. So they need to have the, the two guys that uh, have been well, signing autographs <laughs> face off against Winston, each other. Winston plays we'll for Florida them. State. So different Florida. You just said some Florida. You just tell me Florida. Why can't you tell me the, which Florida it is, Brian? You're well, setting me up. All right, well, it's universally known that Florida State is different than just Florida. That's obviously not universally known, Brian. Okay, well, I universally know it, so, ha. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, and now Gurley, he's still the leading Heisman quarter, uh, candidate in my mind, and he hasn't played the last three games. Now, this guy already has 776 yards and eight touchdowns in five games. So, if they get him back, they're a title contender. If he doesn't make it back they're in trouble so and you know it just seems like they went more about the better route of it they said okay there's improper things improper improper things going on let's just go ahead and shut you down be safe we don't want to forfeit any wins later in the year we want to make sure you're clear go ahead and make you punish you right now and then maybe the ncaa will let you in so look to hear back from the ncaa probably not this week but early next week or maybe even tomorrow you never know ncaa usually acts pretty quick with this stuff uh, when Cam Newton was investigated for his dad almost shopping him around. His dad was pretty much going to teams like, hey, you pay me this much money, my son will play for you. And uh, they pretty much reinstated him the next day after allegations were cleared. So uh, we'll see what happens in that. But, yeah, that's our NCAA football. Let us know what you think. Should Gurley be the Heisman Trophy winner? Should he be reinstated? Or should he just, you know, he got money? Should he just be not an amateur anymore and his uh, eligibility revoked. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter. Where's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And wow, we're just blowing through this show. I have a lot of pages too. I have a lot of stories. Well, you right. quick. Keep going uh, through them. Well, What's the next story, Brian? Brian? What's All the next right. one? It's time for us to talk about some NFL. Dun, dun, dun. Don't finish the song because we don't have the copyright. Stop. No, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I got a new version. I'm pinned down. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and uh, the first story is uh, Michael Sam. We all know him as the first openly gay player in the NFL. Uh, yeah, he got released by the Cowboys. Um, and they're citing that there's too much defensive line depth already there. He was on the practice squad, so he wasn't a full teamer. But they did release him. Uh, I think it was nice of them to, to sign de- him in general. Cause I thought their defense was doing pretty poorly. No, no, they're, they're well, they're five and six and one, so they're not doing that bad. The and defense? one of their strengths, one of their strengths on their defense is their defensive line, so they're doing just fine there. I just okay. thought it was nice of them to pick him up because I didn't think they needed him in the beginning of the season anyway. I honestly thought he should have stayed on the Rams. He proved that he could be an NFL player. But the Rams as well have an amazing defensive line depth. Even though I honestly still think that the up. Cowboys' defense is doing poorly. They didn't give up enough points to the Redskins. They haven't played the Redskins yet. They didn't. Oh, yeah, but the, by the time people watch this, they will have. They didn't give up enough. Okay, there you go. There you go. Thinking <laughs> ahead. Thinking ahead. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Even though the Redskins clearly won that game, hopefully. Yes. It was a 24-21 <laughs> thriller. Yes, but yes. they should have given up 70 points. Yes. Because we hate the Cowboys. Up, but RG3 did make a surprise return. And, In the third quarter. And if you can't tell with our shifty eyes, we are just making stuff up right now. <laughs> Hold on, let me shift Wasn't my that eyes. third Love interception by... Um, Romo. Oh, and Romo. Breland. 
really? <laughs> Romo. 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 He received Surprise. it or something? Surprise. Romo decided to play for the defense? Uh, when, when, when they threw Romo as a safety in there, it was a big surprise. It was. That was it was a shocker. It was the biggest but, shocker but I've ever seen. interceptions made it worth it, so, you know. It was, it was who, pretty crazy. Who would have known? Maybe we'll th- see more quarterbacks playing in the safety position in the future. Is this going to set a trend? we got to keep ro- moving our yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, the trend. Yeah, of, yeah the trend. Quarterback, quarterback safeties. safeties. <laughs> and if any of that actually happens, we need to get who's the best to person to get an interception though that those that throw interceptions. Right? <laughs> just just back to <laughs> And recently there's been announced that the quarterbacks in the NFL are being investigated for just throwing interceptions to each other. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. Because there's a secret organization of quarterbacks. <laughs> Just like the Illuminati. Just they the call it the quarterback club. Ooh. The quarterback <laughs> Ah, I can't. The Illuma quarterbackity. I'm just going to go with quarterback clubs. Game. Remember that game for Sega? Quarterback club. Quarterback club. Yeah, that game sucked, though. Yeah, but it was a game. It was a game. You're right. It was a game. It was a game. That is true. They that made like true. five of them or three. I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't think they made that many of those. But uh, let's move it on to the next NFL story. Um, and it is not. I don't even know how we got to where we got to. I can't even keep track. That's not on the notes. It's not on the notes. But yeah, so um, Percy Harvin. Uh, just last week, was actually traded from the Seattle Seahawks to the uh, New York Jets. Kind of a surprise move, and that is because Percy Harvin is the Seattle Seahawks' best wide receiver. Uh, Now, a lot of rumors are coming out that him and Russell Wilson kind of were developing a rift, but uh, I'm not. I'm not going to go that far um, to say that there was he was developing a rift among the teammates. Uh, but I will say this: he is the third highest paid receiver, yet he should probably be like the thirtieth highest paid receiver, so it's kind of like a miracle move that they were able to move this guy out of town and get a draft pick for him to a team in New York who sucks anyway, so like, why are you making this move? It makes no sense for you. You just locked yourself up with too much cap money, so it was kind of, it was just interesting that this overpaid guy, now he will be able to help the Jets immediately on special teams. He's a very good punt returner. He's a very good kick returner. Uh, if you remember his days when he was in Florida, he was also they, – they threw him in his running back in Florida a lot of times. So maybe he'll be able to help out Geno Smith a little bit, give a little bit of distraction out there. Now, Rex Ryan is saying that he will be suiting up this week. How much he'll actually do, that's to be seen. Mm-hmm. Geno Smith has even come out and said, hey, look, having him is nice, but, hey, I'm still looking to get my other guys the ball. I have Curly. I have Decker. I have other players that have been here – that know the playbook that I'm really looking to focus on. So it's it's interesting because Geno Smith didn't quite welcome him in, but, you know, who knows? I, yeah, I, know. I mean, it, it would seem unusual for this to make so much a big difference at this point in the season, for this season. You, you'd, I mean, maybe a little later on, but you would definitely, like, the players need to play with him for a few weeks, at least a few weeks, if not, you know. Look, he's got to learn the playbook. That's, that's simple yeah. as that. Got to learn the playbook, and I'm sorry, I was just watching um, Antonio Gates catch. Touchdown. But maybe they figure if they get him right now, then you know maybe by the end of the season he's making a difference, or more likely next season he'll be able to hit the ground pretty well because he's already played with them a little bit for half a season. Again, I mean, they're giving him too much money for a, a guy who's never performed at this level. He's the well, third that's why they're the Jets. Receiver. Ah, touche, touche. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, so I think the Jets uh, sometimes forget that they're not baseball. They can't just they, can, they, pay they off. have a, a certain they have a cap. They have to hit. Yeah, they have a cap, um, and the you know the the team dynamic is slightly more important than in baseball. So yeah, so we'll have to see what happens. But do you think this was a good move? Is it a horrible move? Uh, is it a it's a great move by the Seahawks? Except for now, they have no wide receivers. So I don't know. Hit us up. Let us know what you think. Comments down below, of course. At Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Uh, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Let's move on to our last football story of the night. And that is uh, the Brits are trying to invade the NFL. 
Dun dun dun. The Redcoats are coming. And wouldn't that have to be the name of the NFL team if they got one? But uh, Redcoats. <laughs> I'm pinned down! <laughs> Uh, the British government has come out and said that they want an NFL team. Uh, George Osborne... And the US government has come out and said, you're not part of our nation unless you would like to be our new colony. <laughs> uh, there you go. We'll put the <laughs> Fine, you can get an NFL team, but you are now our colony. Ah, see how you like it. We're going to tax all your tea and you drink a lot more than we do. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but George Osborne, the Treasury Chief uh, for the British government, said they will, that the British government will do whatever it can to make this happen. If they become a colony of the U.S., I'm sure we'll make it happen. Yeah, so... <laughs> Not yeah, even a new state. You're just a colony. We don't even have a colony. <laughs> you don't get to vote. And first order of business is getting rid of the queen. I'm sorry. There's no room for monarchy nowadays. Just not. Well, not if they're a colony. What would she be, the queen of the colony? Come on now. Yeah, that's true. Okay, you're right. You're right. Um, but so the NFL has been playing games in Wembley Stadium, which is you know a super big stadium for soccer, at least. Um, since about 2007. Uh, just this year, they upped the no amount of games to three games. We're actually going to have another one this weekend. And apparently, it's kind of taken off there. Now, the last game that was there was like a 28-14 game. It wasn't very good. Uh, but the Brits are developing a taste, and I don't know if it's offensive to call them Brits. I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's not offensive, is it? That's not as far as I'm aware. I thought that was the how dare they be term. offended? But yeah, okay. So they're uh, they're they're developing a taste for our sport. Now, I say that I don't want to discourage the NFL from broadening its horizons and reaching out to other places because I want to tell you, I do. Do you want to know why? Why? Because you remember the problems with those games, that huge time difference, and also the uh, the, the to, lag it puts on the players to have to fly you have, you for have to jump ahead however of my many hours. Points. That bullet point is there. You gotta let me get to it. <laughs> Plus, you didn't tell me about this before. I, I don't I, care. You know what? It's my point. It's my point. Don't try to take credit for my point. It's my bullet point. It was. It was I know right. I did. It's mine. Um, but yeah, so everyone mind, knows this. I don't mind trying to expand the horizons, but more of an NFL Europe type thing, not a whole. You know, like you said, that time zone. I don't know if anybody's ever been through that, but jet lag, that eight-hour or six-hour jet lag is not good for these players, especially when you have to turn around the next week and get ready for a game. And, you, and you're talking about like eight hours from East Coast. Yeah. From parts I mean, of the East Coast. Yeah, and, and that's not even mentioned. You're right, the West Coast teams. And what if you have to fly from England all the way to the West Coast? That would totally screw you up. So, I mean, we're talking maybe... The English teams, they're going to be flying like all the time. Like, unless they get a stadium in the U.S., in which case, what's, what's the, the point? what's the point of having a London <laughs> team? Yes. Yeah, so, um... <laughs> Yeah, so I, I really don't don't think it'll happen, but you never know. The NFL likes money. Uh, I can't see them giving them an expansion team because that would make it 33 teams. So unless they're going to give another city a, another team to make it 34 an even number, I bet you what's going to happen is they're going to move a disgruntled franchise. Unfortunately, probably the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, you know, so we'll see how that goes. But I'm. I'm not for this. Not at all. I'm all for the rest of the world getting football because it is the greatest sport in the world, but not our football. You can have your own. Here's our ball. You play with yours. Stay over there. All right, that's selfish. It also doesn't make sense. You're not, again, I mean. you're not part of the, it's not National Football League if there's two nations. And what, what yeah. if they were the, a, the AFC, the American Football Conference? Come on now. <laughs> you're in the American <laughs> Football Conference, not in America. What? Does that work? I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Let us know what you think. Should London get their own team, or should they just uh, give them a, the, our, their version of the sport over there? Hit us up. Comments down below, of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, or What's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook always go ways of getting a hold of us. But that takes us to the part of the show where we talk about the words from My Face Fantasy Football League recap of the week of the century of the league. That's how it's rolling. So let's start it off uh, with um, the first game. We had a Mingo ate my baby, beat Redskin Potatoes, both three and four teams right now, 89-73. Mingo was led by Shane Vereen, who actually had two reception touchdowns as a running back, and Andre Ellington, who picked him up a good 15 points. Now, Redskin Potatoes did have Jamal Charles with 16 points, great game, Cam Newton with 14, and 
Des Bryant with 150. Didn't get any touchdowns, so that didn't help him very much. Uh, then we have Team Baker beat Team Crawford, it looks like. No, I'm sorry, Team Crawford beat Team Baker 80-65. to uh, Team Crawford, Drew Brees finally had a decent game where he didn't throw 150 interceptions. Now, Team Baker did have Peyton Manning with 28 points, so almost half of his points. But, yeah, pretty weak after that. So, you know, the rest of the team didn't support you, Baker. Sorry, buddy. Uh, then we have Cowboys and Indians playing Team T, and Cowboys and Indians won that one by the closest margin of all of our games, 97-85, uh, behind Aaron Rodgers' 24 points. DeMarco Murray, this guy's been a stud. He's the only guy in NFL history to start off a season with seven straight 100-yard games. So even though he is a Cowboy, I will give him his props on that. Now, Team T did make a smart move and started Doug Baldwin, who's the only receiver left in Seattle. I mean, only wide receiver. There's none other there. So after they got rid of Percy Harvin, and he had 18 points. So that was a smart move by him. Uh, and then, guess who we're going to talk about next? Yes. It's probably yes. Be my game. That'll be your game. All and, right, uh, let's head on out of here. Good night, everybody. <laughs> no, let's, uh, here's... That was unfortunately not the best. <laughs> Okay, you can't just start the music, all right? <laughs> and he lost 109-69. Uh, now, Matt Forte had a really good game, but so did Golden Tate from Detroit. So <coughs> you had two players who probably had – well, Golden Tate definitely probably had his best se- game of the season so far. So yeah, it's unfortunate that you ran and My players game. just all did poor – most of them did pretty poorly. It was like the worst game of the season for several of them. <laughs> But if it makes you feel any better, my team disgruntled Wookiees. I had Wookiees. zero. He played, but he got zero. Yeah. Well, my team disgruntled Wookiees. Uh, yeah, we lost 72-51 to Team Hugel. Um, let me just tell you the average points was about three points per player. Oliver had seven. Jones had three. Quick had three. Thomas had two. Tate had three. San Diego defense had two. Phil Dawson had four. And then Eddie Lacy and Anthony Austin Davis had 14 each. So I had a horrible one. And Demarius Thomas, for him, had 29 points. So darn you, Demarius Thomas. So the league is shaping up. Team Hugel's kind of running away with it right now. They're 6-1. I'm 4-3. and three. Cowboys and Indians, 3-4. and four. Team T, 3-4. and four. Team Crawford, 3-4. and four. Team Baker, 1-6. and six. Sorry, buddy. Team Redskin Potatoes, 3-4. and four. Mingo ate my baby, 3-4. and four. Team Tavner, 5-2. and two. And Chainsaws is 4-3. and three. So... We still got a couple weeks left to go. Anybody knows what will happen, and uh, it looks like me and you, Brendan, are close to getting in the playoffs. Not quite shoot in there, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see. What do you think about this week? Uh, I think I'll win, just because I always think that. I think I'll lose, Oliver, but I'm, oh, I'm actually Oliver. a little nervous. I'm a little concerned about my game because right now with my current lineup, a good there. There's a few things in there that if I do well, that means my real team did badly, mm. but it's kind of likely. Well, and this is how I usually see it. Uh, usually whenever the Redskins win, I lose both my fantasy games. Now, I would take a Redskins win every week and lose every week in fantasy football and be just mm. as happy. But, um, yeah, it just kind of sucks that way. And now I have Braden Oliver out there. He's got me one point so far tonight. Julius Thomas has one, zero points for me. And my defense now has negative one point. So looking like I'm going to head for another loss. But, hey, it might be a good thing for Redskins. Yay. Well, Redskins will play until Monday anyway. But, yeah. yeah. But we already predicted that game. And we told you what is going yes, to happen. Because I did yeah. so poorly. Because uh, I have Tony Romo as my quarterback. Yeah. And he uh, threw 70 interceptions. But then he but also he got, got his own three <laughs> interceptions. <laughs> So, and that counts uh, for double points because quarterbacks uh, game uh, interceptions uh, is in the rules. Yeah, yeah now. It's, it's something interesting happened there, yeah. Uh, but I think that's going to be about do it for us tonight. As always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Yes, what you think. <coughs> that's what I know. Are you all right? You going to die? No, I, am, I might die. I might all right, well, maybe if you should we headbang to your death. Headbang to my last. death. All right. <laughs> Let's do Best it. Best show ever. <laughs>